If you're still wondering whether SpaceX will launch the massive Starship rocket from Florida, the answer is undoubtedly yes, and even that launch date may be closer than ever. This story is not without merit, as evidenced by the latest action from the Federal Aviation Administration. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. What did the FAA just do with SpaceX and Starship in Florida that shocked NASA? When can we expect to see Starship launch in Florida? SpaceX is planned to build a Starship launch complex at the Kennedy Space Center are moving closer to reality even as it potentially takes over a launch site from neighboring Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Recently on May 10th, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, announced that they are beginning an environmental impact statement for Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. This marks a significant initial step in SpaceX's efforts to launch Starship from Florida, and the FAA's response suggests that this process may be resolved swiftly, unlike past launch approval delays. Currently at LC-39A, SpaceX has constructed the head of the Starship launch tower adjacent to the existing launch pad used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Significant work on this new launch tower ceased at the end of 2022 as SpaceX shifted focus to developing the Starship and Super Heavy rockets from their test launch site in Texas, where they conducted three flights with varying degrees of success. However, in recent months, SpaceX's activity regarding this Starship launch tower has become notable again, with rumors suggesting they're preparing to construct additional infrastructure components to support launches from this site. Combined with the FAA's actions, we can certainly see that SpaceX will eventually conduct launches from the Launch Complex 39A sooner or later. But why is the FAA involved? I'm sure many SpaceX fans and longtime followers of our channel have been while wondering about this. We all know LC-39A is the location leased by NASA to SpaceX, and they together completed a less stringent environmental assessment, EA, in 2019 under the National Environmental Policy Act for Starship. What this means in our minds is that if SpaceX launches Starship at LC-39A, they wouldn't have to deal with the hassle of obtaining individual launch permits for each launch. However, in reality, it's been reported by multiple sources that the assessment at that time was never submitted to the FAA for launch licensing. And now, considering the changes to Starship, both NASA and the FAA have concluded that a new environmental impact statement, EIS, is necessary. SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in the 2019 EA, the FAA stated, including a catch tower for super heavy booster landings. An EIS is a much more comprehensive document compared to an EA. While an EA covers basic requirements, an EIS delves deeper necessitating a thorough discussion of reasonable alternatives and a thorough examination of the proposal's cumulative impacts. This includes considering all existing and reasonably foreseeable future developments within the project area. In essence, EAs operate on a limited scale, akin to piecemeal planning, while EISs offer a more holistic landscape-level approach. The original 2019 EA called for building a launch mount, liquid methane farm, transport road, deluge water system, landing zone, and high-pressure gaseous commodity lines. NASA issued that year a finding of no significant impact, concluding the environmental impacts associated with Starship Super Heavy infrastructure development and operations would not individually or cumulatively have a significant impact on the quality of biological or physical environment, said FAA. While the purpose and need for Starship Super Heavy at LC-39A have not changed since the 2019 EA, the Starship Super Heavy concept of operations has evolved from the original 2019 EA scope, according to the FAA. Although the FAA hasn't publicly disclosed when the new assessment process will be completed, typically an EIS evaluation can take around 18 months to finalize. SpaceX will be responsible for preparing the assessment under FAA oversight. Alongside the new review, SpaceX also expanded on new proposals. According to a statement from the FAA, the SpaceX proposal includes constructing the necessary infrastructure to support up to 44 launches per year from Launch Complex 39A with Super Heavy Booster and Starship vehicle recovery landings at LC-39A or on a drone ship or expending them in the ocean. The call for 44 launches builds on 2019's plans that called for up to 24. That's a surprising number we didn't anticipate. If we stick to the predicted 18-month timeline for the environmental impact study I just mentioned, starting from the date of investigation by early 2026, we could witness dozens of consecutive Starship launches and landings from the Space Coast. However, in reality, this time frame might even be shorter, as per Elon's statement earlier this year, that the company plans to commence Starship operations at LC-39A by mid-2025. So, what do you think would be the appropriate time frame for SpaceX's development? Give us a number down there in the comments.
The Super Heavy booster will also land back at LC-39A, while in the earlier EA, SpaceX proposed landing the booster on a drone ship or at Landing Zone 1, the former Launch Complex 13 at nearby Cape Canaveral Space Force Station used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy booster landings today. Additionally, SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in the 2019 EA, a Super Heavy boost catch tower, a natural gas liquefaction system, an air separation unit for propellant generation, and stormwater deluge ponds. SpaceX also proposes to launch an advanced design of the Starship and Super Heavy vehicle up to 9 Raptor engines for the Starship and up to 35 for Super Heavy's booster. Accompanying propellant storage and distribution pipelines would also need to be constructed, especially if the launch cadence cited in the notice comes to pass. That and SpaceX will need to construct fabrication, storage, and refurbishment facilities for both the booster, the Super Heavy first stage, and the Starship, the now familiar spacecraft that at first glance resembles a rocket from a 1950s sci-fi movie. After announcing the commencement of the assessment, the FAA will hold an online meeting and three public scoping meetings, inviting relevant agencies and organizations, local Native American tribes, and members of the public to provide comments on the potential environmental impacts of the proposal. The public comment period began May 10th with a publication of notice in the FAA Federal Register regarding the intent to prepare an EIS. Interested parties can attend the in-person scoping meetings on June 12th and 13th, followed by a virtual meeting on June 17th. Further information is available on FAA's website. Considering the scoping period, the public can submit comments in person or electronically through June 24th before the EIS moves into the next phases. The new study will proceed concurrently with the EIS as the Air Force responsible for space launches from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station had been previously reviewed several months ago. Earlier this year, the Air Force announced it too was starting an EIS for its own potential Starship site with its primary choice of Canaveral Space Launch Complex 37. This site for years has hosted United Launch Alliance launches, but ULA's lease is set to end after the final Delta IV Heavy mission this past April. A second undeveloped launch complex is also being considered. The Department of Defense is interested in Starship's capabilities to support its mission and wanted its own pad for launches similar to how SpaceX maintains Falcon 9 launches from Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40 in addition to the KSC pad. Regarding the specifics of the Air Force's EIS plans, they've been outlined on the website spaceforstarshipeis.com and a series of public meetings have been organized. While specific outcomes are pending with enticing options that increase the company's scalability, there's no reason for SpaceX to overlook them. With two environmental assessments and two potential launch complexes in the near future, SpaceX is gradually demonstrating its capability and effort to achieve the goal of thousands of launches. After all, Starship plays a crucial role not only in the broader aerospace industry, but also bears global scale responsibilities. Starship is SpaceX's planned fully reusable rocket, meaning eventually to replace its Falcon family of rockets. Elon Musk's goal with a vessel is to enable the settlement of Mars. The rocket has the capacity to fly up to 100 passengers or up to 500,000 pounds of cargo to space, which is more than three times the payload capacity of Falcon Heavy. The capacity of potential point-to-point -point flights on Earth that could rapidly deploy cargo or even troops also have the Department of Defense interested in Starship's success. Moreover, NASA is counting on a version of Starship to be used for the Artemis III mission as the human landing system that will bring astronauts, including the first woman, back to the lunar surface for the first time since the end of the Apollo program in 1972. Launching Starship from the Holy Land of Florida has been the dream of many, and it seemed very close when SpaceX was building a launch tower there. However, everything has changed as they have just made some unexpected moves with the launch system. What the heck is SpaceX doing in Florida? No OLM? Will Starship be launched in Florida or not? What could SpaceX's interesting plan be? One, two, three, four. All four legs of the launch tower in Florida have been swiftly removed in just a few days. Currently, all that remains is an empty plot of land waiting for the next steps from SpaceX. This has sparked lively discussions in the space community about SpaceX's reasons and intentions. Particularly, there have been many opinions suggesting that SpaceX will demolish the entire Starship launch area in Florida to focus on Starship testing in Texas. Is this reality as rumored? After observing the developments in Florida for some time, I must confirm that removal is something that cannot happen. Instead, it's a purposeful modification by SpaceX. I can think of at least four main scenarios that SpaceX could pursue for this Starship launch site. As we've seen through the three Starship launches in Texas, SpaceX has the capability and knowledge to adjust technical architectures to maximize efficiency for the Starship program. 
Therefore, replacement is inevitable. And what we're wondering is how they'll replace and what they'll replace. The most optimistic scenario for dismantling the previously erected launch tower legs is that they were outdated and deteriorated over time. And simply put, SpaceX removed them to replace them with something better. It's also possible that SpaceX may want to change the design of the launch pad legs, for example, increasing or decreasing their number. In this case, they would still need to dismantle the old launch pad legs to balance the spacing between the legs, and it could also save time, cost, and effort in construction. The third scenario I find quite interesting is when the goal is to clear the tower for repurposing. SpaceX is running out of space at Boca Chica, and it'll take some time to build OLM-2 there. Basically, they will want to move rocket testing launching from Boca Chica to production launching in Florida. The idle tower could quickly be repurposed for testing. Of course, not during Flight 5. A slightly more realistic scenario would be a complete redesign of the launch pad. The launch tower, chopstick, and QD arm would remain unchanged, but the launch pad and anything underneath would be completely redesigned. In this story, SpaceX may have two options. SpaceX's first choice would be the installation of giant cooling steel plates with thousands of water spray holes connected to the water deluge system installed under the launch tower. The second option is a flame trench here. Remember when SpaceX was building the first orbital launch pad for Starship, not at Starbase, but at LC-39A? They started work on that deflector in 2019, although work stopped about a year later according to documents released at that time. This deflector would be 20 meters wide and 20 meters high with the launch pad raised 30 meters from the ground. Very large. Overall, no matter how the changes occur, SpaceX still needs to adjust to accommodate its longer prototypes in the future. But we can also see that perhaps the most reasonable option is the force scenario, which will provide more assurance and certainty in SpaceX's strategic steps. What do you think about this? Please discuss and let us know your insights. We're excited to read all your comments. Well, we've discussed many spaces where SpaceX can do it, but what about the cases that they can't? Yes, the case where SpaceX cannot do that is completely eliminating the Starship launch area in Florida. Why? To be honest, Florida is an ideal launch for Starship. The Florida launch sites like Cape Canaveral provide better access to more orbital inclinations and trajectories due to their location closer to the equator compared to Texas. The Earth rotates west to east. Standing on the equator drinking a latte, you're already moving east at about a thousand miles an hour. The closer to the equator, therefore, that you can launch your rockets, the less fuel it'll take to get them up into orbit. Florida was the no-brainer choice. This is especially important for potential Starship missions to the Moon, Mars, and other deep space destinations. More importantly, we can see the trend that SpaceX will conduct many Starship launches in Florida in the future, because in 2022, Elon Musk has said that SpaceX ultimately plans to move Starship operations to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is where the company is building a new launch tower and already has all the permits required for orbital launches. The South Texas site will likely be maintained as a hub for research and development, but as Starship becomes operational, there will be less need for a vibrant test program at Boca Chica Beach. SpaceX may have won the battle to launch Starship test flights from Starbase, but during the fight, Texas may have lost its claim on future historic flights to Mars. To conduct orbital Starship flights from Texas, which would involve launching a bigger rocket than the Saturn V that took astronauts to the moon, the company would need to comply with 75 provisions. These include limits on road closures and creation of wildlife corridors, as well as other less conventional requirements such as preparing a historical context report of the Mexican War before SpaceX obtains the final FAA license to launch its mega rocket. The document only covers 10 launches per year, 5 suborbital and 5 orbital, a limit that the company could easily run into once Starship starts flying. Adding to this pressure in Texas are legal actions by environmental groups. Several lawsuits have broken out recently. Therefore, Florida will allow SpaceX to start orbital test flights more quickly while continuing the test management process for Starbase. And it's not just SpaceX. Government agencies also strongly support the establishment of new Starship launch sites in Florida. Starship is an integral part of NASA's Artemis project, which aims to return humans to the moon for extended periods, as well as eventually carry astronauts to Mars. NASA's plans for Starship's huge payload capacity includes placing a space station known as a gateway in orbit around the moon, as well as the use of Starship as a crewed lunar lander. The U.S. Space Force intends to use Starship in launching and maintaining national security payloads both into orbit and to the moon. Additionally, Starship will benefit both governmental and commercial spaceflight agencies with its capabilities to serve as an orbital gas station, refueling satellites and other spacecraft while in flight. The Department of the Air Force, DAF, has proposed three options for SpaceX's Starship launch pads at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, utilizing Space Launch Complex 37, SLC-37, 
building a new Space Launch Complex 50, SLC-50, or opting for no construction. Given the governmental plans for the use of Starship, it's a safe bet that no construction is not really an option. The idea of building a Launch Complex SLC-50 would require the use of land on the north side of Kennedy Space Center. If construction were to occur there, it would necessitate the closing of additional land in the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, as well as sections of the Playa Linda Beach to the public. That option would likely face stiff opposition, as the area is popular with locals and tourists and plays an important role in the Titus Valeria economy. The more likely candidate for the new construction would seem to be SLC-37 on the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Currently utilized by United Launch Alliance for their heavy lift rocket, the Delta IV, the pad would seem a likely candidate, with ULA's last Delta IV launch slated for later this month. The Space Coast has already experienced a record-breaking 72 orbital launches last year and anticipates even more activity. SpaceX's expansion could potentially bring billions of dollars to the region through direct launch support jobs, associated employment for families, and increased tourism. SpaceX has said their goal is to have the new Starship Super Heavy Launch Complex operational by 2026, subject to environmental approvals. The draft Environmental Impact Statement, EIS, is set for publication in December, followed by a final study due in September next year, which will determine the viability and environmental impact of these sites. The necessity of the EIS stems from the increasing frequency of space launches and their potential to affect the environment adversely. As the Starship program aims to conduct missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, understanding and mitigating its environmental footprint is crucial. The timeline for this study has been a topic of considerable discussion. Preliminary assessments began in early 2023 with the findings presented at the Titusville hearings marking an important phase in the process. Participants at the hearings expressed a range of opinions. Some voiced concerns about the potential for noise pollution and harm to local ecosystems, while others highlighted the importance of advancing human spaceflight capabilities. The feedback collected during the study will be instrumental in refining the EIS and ensuring that the Starship program can proceed with minimal environmental disruption. As the study progresses, further public engagement and transparency will be critical in addressing community concerns and fostering a sustainable path forward for space exploration. The final EIS report, expected to be released later this year, will outline the project's environmental mitigation strategies and set the stage for the next generation of space missions. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.